Welcome to part two of a three-part series where I rank the 14 Air Jordan sneakers that MJ himself wore as a Chicago Bull. So if you haven't already checked out part one where I talk about the four worst Jordan sneakers, you can do that by clicking the link right over here. And then after you're done here, you can check out part three where we finally lay it down and decide what are the five best Air Jordan sneakers of all time. But first, we gotta talk about 10 through six. These are the top 10 best Air Jordans. Kicking off the list at number 10, we have the Air Jordan 14s. Now I actually debated for a real long time whether or not to put the Air Jordan 10 at number 10 instead of the 14s. However, when I thought about it, the Air Jordan 14 has a legacy that's pretty hard to deny. For starters, it was the last shoe Jordan wore as a bull, so it'll always be an iconic sneaker, just because it was what MJ wore in his final playing days and also because it is the sneaker MJ laced up while draining one of the most iconic shots the world has ever seen. So the 14's legacy is pretty hard to ignore and even though its visuals are somewhat of an acquired taste, I personally really love how Nike took a concept and translated it into performance and visual design. The Air Jordan 14 was inspired by Michael's Ferrari 550M with a number of design features including a Ferrari inspired Jumpman crest on the collar, a red midsole piece that's inspired by the Ferrari's engine, the four foot midsole design which is inspired by the grille, as well as a rubber heel cup which is modeled after high performance tires. The leather upper also looks like it was ripped straight out of a luxury sports car which falls right in line with the overall theme and that's something I could really appreciate about the 14s because they achieved a visual concept without sacrificing any performance and to me that is the pinnacle of performance shoe design that all sneakers should strive to accomplish so even though the 14s visuals aren't going to be for everyone and they're not necessarily the best Jordans to rock off of the court. Their legacy as the last Jordan MJ wore as a bull as well as their attention to detail to me make them one of the 10 best J's ever. The 14s have also stayed very relevant even after its original release by staying active with a number of retro releases and new colorways that MJ never played in but are still loved by fans such as the Laney's, Ferraris and even a collaboration with Supreme which isn't the best colorway, but it's still impressive that a brand as big as Supreme chose the 14s to collab on. Oh, and fun fact, the Jumpman actually appears seven times on each the left and the right shoe, which combined makes 14. So that's another nice little detail that you may have not known about, but let me know where you have the Air Jordan 14 ranked on your top 10 list by dropping it in the comment section below. Next up at number nine, we have the Air Jordan 7s. Now the 7s are kind of a polarizing sneaker because to some, they feel like the Air Jordan 8 where it feels a little off brand from what the Jordan brand had made its name on, but for others, they simply love everything the 7s have to offer. For starters, these were the sneaker MJ wore during his Olympic run with the Dream Team, so that in itself already makes the 7 an icon to fans across the globe, but it also took everything its predecessor, the 6s did, and in a way, refined them. The sevens are overall a lighter shoe that makes use of a slimmer upper as well as lighter materials for the tongue which may take away something from them visually but Nike made up for it by painting the tongue with some unique graphics that actually varied from shoe to shoe since the material was all cut from one big cloth so your tongue was gonna look a lot different from everybody else's which was pretty cool. Now Nike originally dropped five colorways of the 7s in 1992 and while some of the colorways were great such as the Bordeaux, the Raptors, the Hares and of course the Olympics, none of those colorways sported the traditional black and red look that the Jordan line had made its name on. While the new colorways were unique and exciting and they definitely fit right in with the 90s, there's just something about putting on a pair of black and red Jordans that make you feel like Mike. It's the war paint that MJ went to battle with and having that tradition broken with the sevens was honestly a little disappointing to the fans. I mean, it would almost be like if Nike dropped a Kobe Bryant sneaker in non-Laker colorways. It wouldn't make any sense and that's what I'm trying to say Nike did with the sevens here. 
Nike also got rid of other design staples such as the Visible Air Unit, Nike Air logo, as well as translucent outsole, but those are all things that we could live without, and the absence of a true bread colorway is what really hurt the 7s in the eyes of fans. However, Nike did market the 7s with an ad campaign that featured Bugs Bunny, and MJ wore the Bodos in Michael Jackson's Jam video, so the 7s did have a presence in pop culture, even though it might not be as big as the other J's on the list. It also doesn't help that the retro colorways of the 7s really haven't been anything special with some real misfires, which means if you weren't a fan of the 7s then, you probably aren't a fan of the 7s now. But at the end of the day, it's MJ's Dream Team shoe, and to me personally, I'd rather have a pair of 7s than 14s. I mean, when are you? Coming in at number 8, we got the Air Jordan 13. So if you've been keeping up with The Last Dance, you probably noticed Jordan rocking the 13s a lot. And that's because he did rock them for the majority of that final season. So the Bulls and Jordan fans, the 13s will always be very nostalgic since he did spend most of that last and final season in them. The 13s were designed behind the inspiration of a Panther since the designer, Tinker Hatfield, compared Jordan's game to that of a black cat where he would study his prey and then attack. The Panther-inspired design features include an outsole that looks like a Panther's paw, as well as a hologram logo on the collar, which is supposed to resemble a Panther's eyes, but overall, I just totally see what Tinker was going for here with the 13s, as they definitely exude a Panther-like personality, which does make for one of the more unique-looking silhouettes in the entire series. The 13s also have some of the more iconic colorways in the Air Jordan line, such as the blue flint colorway, the breads, which have a 3M panel on the underlay that could also be a nod to the way a panther's eyes reflect in light, as well as the black toes, which were famously renamed the He Got Games after Denzel rocked them in the hit motion picture of the same name. Later on, Jordan Brand would drop some great retro colorways as well, like the black and green altitudes, keeping the 13s fresh in the minds of Jordan fans both old and new, making the 13s a popular option for those looking to cop a fresh pair of J's. The 13s might not have a singular iconic moment with MJ wearing them, but to fans, it is one of those shoes that you could vividly picture MJ in since he did wear them for the majority of his last season as a bull, and that's why I have them at number 8 on the list. Next up at number 7, I have the Air Jordan 6s. Okay, so this is where the list really starts to heat up because I'd imagine having the 6s this low is going to anger a lot of people. But no matter how badly I wanted the 6s to be higher on the list, and trust me guys, I really thought hard of putting it higher, maybe at number 5, maybe as high as even number 3. I just couldn't put it in front of the other sneakers on the list. I know it's crazy, but in the grand scheme of things, the 6s might not be as good as you think. Now the Air Jordan 6 was the shoe MJ wore while winning his first championship, so that's iconic already. But just as a standalone shoe, the 6s were way ahead of its time when they first dropped back in 1991. The 6s have a very aggressive look which made them look very futuristic, perfect for a guy who was being touted as the future of the league, and MJ had actually told Tinker while he was designing the 6s that he had a hard time putting on some of his previous models. So Tinker responded by adding two holes in the tongue as well as a looped pull tab on the heel that Tinker called a spoiler and to me, it always kind of reminded me of the spoiler on a 911 Porsche. The upper was also another striking feature on the 6s with a very interesting exoskeletal design that would showcase the best with multiple colors like it was on the red and white Carmine colorway which is a personal favorite of mine. The 6s have remained active in the retro market as well, with a ton of retro releases of both new and old colorways making a return, with the most recent hype release being the Travis Scott collaboration, and the 6s were also used in the Japanese anime Slam Dunk, which also got a collaboration a few years back, so while the 6s aren't the rarest of airs, they still do fairly well on every release, which is just a demonstration of how loved they truly are. No matter how high or low you have the 6s ranked on your list, they are no doubt one of the more iconic J's with their sharp lines and unmistakable look that even had Jerry Seinfeld in on the Jordan craze. But like I said earlier, I just couldn't find it in me to rank it higher on the list because at the end of the day, I'd rather have the sneakers you're about to see than the 6s 
and that's why I might have them ranked a little lower than you. Finally, at number six, we have the Air Jordan 5. All right, so the Jordan 5s are personally a top three favorite of mine. I mean, I absolutely love this sneaker. Look at my pair, guys. These things are so beat. These are absolutely disgusting. I've worn these so much, guys. But when I was trying to make this list, I tried to be as objective as possible. So while I think the five should be a little bit higher, I think in the grand scheme of things, number six is a pretty good spot for them. Unlike some of the other Jordans, the fives don't really have a singular iconic moment that MJ wore the fives in. And on the contrary, the fives most iconic moment is probably the number of times Will Smith rocked them without laces on the Fresh Prince of Bel-Air. So chances are, if you were a kid in the 90s, you wanted a pair of fives since they were on TV all the time. And also because the fives are truly one of the more unique looking Jordans in the entire line. Coming off the success of the Air Jordan 4, the fives took on a completely new look that featured iconic design elements such as the massive reflective tongue which Tinker implemented so when photographers shot Jordan on the court, his shoes would glow. The fives were also the first Jordan to feature a translucent rubber outsole which really made them stand out amongst the other sneakers on the market and the midsole also featured a unique visual design with the shark teeth on the forefoot which of course is inspired by World War II era fighter planes. I mean, I don't really know what to say guys. I can only imagine that back in 1990, the fives really stood out as a true powerhouse, a truly unique sneaker that had a ton of features that really pleased fans. And my favorite feature has always been the 23 on the heel because to me, it gives the fives like a player exclusive like feel. So when you put them on, you feel like you're putting on a shoe that Michael Jordan has worn. It doesn't feel like you're putting on his signature shoe or an Air Jordan. It feels like you went into Michael Jordan's locker and got one of his shoes. And that's why I've always been a huge fan of the fives. But what holds them back in my opinion is there isn't a singular iconic moment that we can look back to like an ELO shot, like a flu game, like an 88 dunk contest with MJ wearing the fives. It was pretty much just him tearing up the league which is fine, but when you look at the fives, you really don't get transported to an iconic Jordan moment. And that's why I don't think they're as iconic as some of the other great Air Jordans. The fives have remained very active though post-release with a ton of new retro colorways, which helps maintain its popularity throughout the years as one of the best Jordans that you could wear off of the court. And also thanks to the massive tongue, which is just a timeless look. They may be big, they may be bulky, but when it's all said and done, the fives have remained as one of the most popular and iconic Jordans Nike has ever put out. And if they had an iconic moment on the court that we could look to, they would definitely be higher on the list for sure. But as they stand right now, they land as the sixth most iconic Air Jordan of all time. Now that you guys are done with part two, you can head over and check out what I think are the five best Jordans ever by clicking the link right over here. And subscribe to the channel for more sneaker related content just like this. My name is Aaron. It's Brigitte Avenue. I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.